Yeah. Final Fantasy 13 too. Well, it's at least better than this one, right? Actually, you know what? I actually like this game a lot. This is pretty freaking awesome. Um, as far as Final Fantasy games go, this is the best one outside of the PS1, Super Nintendo, NES games. You know what I mean? Um, it's better than Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy XI, Final Fantasy XII, Final Fantasy XIII. Definitely better than Final Fantasy X too. That game was terrible. <sighs> but anyways, uh, the point of all this is not that the game's awesome, you know. I mean, it is. If you like JRPGs, I guess that is. I mean, well, I mean, I guess you'd have to really not be one of those nut jobs that plays uh, this guy or whatever, you know. That's cool if you do that, you know, but... Uh, uh, you know what I mean, like, you're not, like, a hardcore JRPG guy, you're more, you know, you like the Final Fantasy games kind of person, you know. Um, this game is definitely awesome for for, for you, your kind of crowd, you know. Uh, but, um, this, this, I, I don't know if, if you've played this game, you probably know what the hell this is about. Um trying to figure out this stupid puzzle. It's called a clock hand puzzle. Um, there's multiple puzzle types in the game. There's like three or four different types of puzzles. But in this particular one, it, it, the interesting thing about it is that if you go online to like an FAQ or walkthrough or something like that, trying to figure out what you're supposed to do to solve them, you're out of luck. Um, you might find a few YouTube videos that show you how to solve some of the puzzles. But the ones that they show you how to solve more or less are um, in the storyline. You know, the puzzles are the same every time. So if you don't get it the first time, you can just keep trying and eventually you'll get it. You know, I mean, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, it's actually a pretty neat concept for a puzzle. You know, you have like a clock face and you have numbers anywhere from one to six and you have two clock hands. And so, you, you know, all the numbers are populated throughout the clock hands. And the number of uh, numbers there could be can be anywhere from 6 to 13. Um, or really even 5, I think. I, seen, I think I've seen someone with just 5. You know, basically the more numbers there are in the field, the more difficult the puzzle. Um, and the bigger the numbers are, the more spaces it will move, which can mean, mean that... Uh, you know, it just makes it really complicated. You know, the first uh, few times you do it, it's not really that bad. The most numbers you'll have on the clock face might be like eight or nine. It doesn't really get that difficult because the highest number to move would be like four. You know, so it's not too difficult to do those ones. Um, and whenever you first do those, you have as much time as you want to figure it out. So you can just sit there and figure out what you want to do. You know, so those are pretty easy. And for the most part, if you're just wanting to play the game just to go through the story, you only have to do like maybe four or five of those puzzles tops for the entire game. But, um, yeah. If you want to collect all the fragments like me, you have to do this shit. It's just ridiculous. You know, I'm all the way, I'm completely done with these, you know, just to point this out. You know, I'm done with the clock puzzles. Thank God I'm done with them. They are ridiculous as hell. And that's why I'm ranting about them, you know. Um, you know, I know I've been kind of, like, uh, probably confusing you guys. So I'll just show you once again. This is just an example of one which I solved, you know. Now, notice how there's, like, 11 or 12 different numbers on here. Actually, this, it, I think it is 12, actually. So it's just like a normal clock face. And I actually got, got lucky with this one because I just selected the four at the top, you know, I figure, well, let's go with that. And then, you know, I kind of just mapped everything out because, you know, I mean, you get the pause to cheat. But, uh, yeah, I kind of got lucky with this particular solution. But the thing is, these are all random. You know, you don't know if you're going to get one that's going to be easy to solve or, like, more or less impossible to solve. You know, this one I only, I really got lucky, you know, this actually would have been a really difficult one if I just played the game like normal. I would have failed, and I would have to keep retrying, failed, and retrying 50 times before I freaking get it finally. Uh, there's no way you can plan out, you know, you can't look up an FAQ walkthrough on some of these because it'll randomly generate the numbers every time. Um, 
you know, I've actually had a couple of solutions mapped out on some of these sheets. I got like six of these sheets. Uh, I had a couple of them where I mapped like every single possibility out and there was no way to pass it. Um, so yeah, you act, the game actually throw out impossible puzzles just so you have to retry again and hope you get one that you can solve and then you have to figure out how to solve it in 30 seconds unless you cheated like me and paused the game and wrote down everything. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. You know, I come home from work, you know, just want to sit down and play my Final Fantasy game, you know, and uh, just have fun with it. But no, no, Square Enix, you, you had other plans, didn't you? So, um, you know, I know people will gripe about, oh, I gotta pay $10 to, uh, you know, play this game online, or, oh, gotta buy DLC on the disc, you know. Well, you know, see, the thing is, though, you don't have to do either of those things, you know, in order to play through the game. You know, you can just say, like, fuck you, game companies, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay you, you know. So, uh, you can either give it to me for free, or I just won't play it, you know, whatever. I don't care. Uh, but, um, no, this they have to, you know, if you want to get every single fragment, you have to go through a lot of shit to do it, you know. Uh, I've had other frustrating moments, like maps that say 99% explored, and I can zoom in all the way in the map, I don't see anything, I have to walk every, I have to walk around the freaking perimeter of the entire map just to get my 100%, just so I can get one more fragment, you know. And I have to do that for like five maps because there's always this little tiny sliver blue thing, you know, that you just don't explore. Um, and then there will be freaking treasure boxes that are like 100 feet down and you, they're like little tiny pixel size. And, you know, unless you're just like panning the camera around everywhere, you know, you have no freaking idea it's going to be there, or you, know, you can look up a walkthrough. I had to do that for some things, you know, I probably unlocked about 15 or so fragments thanks to walkthroughs. But these, the fragments involved for the clock game puzzles, there are no walkthroughs, because it's random. And there's no, like, guide on, there's no, like, there's no pattern, I guess is what I'm trying to say, you know, there's not, like, a mathematical pattern at least that I can figure out. I'm not like a math genius, you know. But, um, you know, I know a little bit. You know, I'll say that much. And, um, you know, I try to figure out if there was some kind of pattern, like if there's a particular number that you should start with off first. Like if you start with a high number, low number, if you should always start with like a four. Or, you know, just trying to figure out the best way to go about it, you know, to solve the puzzles. Like I guess the most probable way to go about it, but there didn't really seem to be any kind of uh, consistency, you know, and that makes it pretty difficult to, to solve this, you know, it's pretty much based on luck, and obviously, I mean, you have to have a little intelligence too, you know, I mean, we're not going to deny that, but, you know, I mean, you know how the whole 50,000 monkeys can't write Shakespeare, you know, or whatever. I don't know what the stupid thing is. Well, 50,000 monkeys just randomly jamming the buttons can probably solve that equation faster than someone like me that's actually trying to figure out some common sense out of it. Gosh. So, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Uh, do you like my posters? I hope so. Oh, and the uh, DJ Hero. <laughs> this game's a lot of fun, actually. I like DJ Hero. I hate rap. I hate pop, I hate that kind of music, really. But I like DJ Hero, go figure. It's an Activision game. Um, to my defense, I only paid $23 for it with the turntable and DJ Hero 2. And then I paid like 5 bucks for a DJ Hero 1 copy. So, you know. And, um, you know, so Activision pretty much lost money for me to have DJ Hero. So that's okay. But I'm not banning Activision anymore anyways. I'm just going to kind of not buy their games unless it's advantageous to me to do so. So, yeah, anyways, um, Final Fantasy XIII 2, if you haven't played it yet, pick it up. It's like 40 bucks at GameStop right now. So with that, guys, down Phoenix out.